Take a look at what's making headlines across board. And today's big story on the standard has to do with a CS fake 4 billion health kit contract. While on the nation, you're going to be an apparent but to it's it it is covering an apparent battle between uh of Uhuru and Ruto uh to control parliament. Now, this is these are very interesting stories, among other stories that we're going to be reviewing today. But uh, we are joined by our regular Friday panel, who is we'll start off to my immediate right. We have Philip Magal, who is a lawyer. We have Ruth Ambogo, who is a youth advocate, as well as Mark Bichachi, who's a, consult, a communication consultant, and David Osiani, who is a governance expert. Now, this story on the uh, on the the apparent uh, variation between um, the quotation for the amounts that would take to have a cost of ICU equipment from Philip Medical System is quite interesting because there's a very huge gap between what was uh, quoted as and what was used. Now we're told that 3.6 billion is the cost of ICU, ICU equipment Philip Medical System Netherlands BV delivered, while 4.5 billion shillings is the amount the Ministry of Health claims to it paid for said equipment and obviously this is raising our questions and the Dutch company hired to supply the equipment according to the standard in a 63 million billion program this owns that cost that is being fronted by the ministry I'd like to your take on that Philip uh, another example of uh, what Kenyans have grown used to yes allegation of uh, misappropriation of public funds mm -hmm. what we can see is that uh, Possibly the government has lost 900 billion, I mean million in this deal, which is a lot of money. Yes. Again, in one docket that has been constantly in the news the last one month concerning the various contracts is had with different parties, with the counties, mm -hmm. with uh, uh, on medical supplies. I think this particular ministry needs to be investigated. Uh, all this needs to be cleared. Mm -hmm. If somebody is culpable, they should be charged. Uh, and uh, once again, my appeal to the president is, if at all there are people who are not clean in your cabinet, I think it is long overdue. Mm -hmm. They should be home by now. Yeah. And those very, we've been told more about those variations. The trolley dressing market price is 15,000 shillings, but the lease yeah. was at 1.29 million under MES. And we had the representative of that particular company uh, appearing before the Senate ad hoc committee on medical equipment leasing at Parliament yesterday, where they actually disowned these amounts that are being fronted by the Health Ministry. What do you feel about this one, Ms. Abogo? Well, um, it's unfortunate that this is not the first time we are seeing a similar scandal within the health ministry. Yeah. Do you remember that um, back in 2015, mm -hmm. when the government was trying to purchase or buy, the Ministry of Health was trying to purchase or buy the, um, what are they called, mobile clinics. Yeah. Now, the estimated price for one mobile clinic was supposed to be 1.4 million shillings. Yes. And yet the Ministry of Health purchased them mm -hmm. at 10 million shillings per unit, which is pretty much tenfold of the original price or the price that the, the, that the units were supposed to be bought at. Yes. And then now, in addition to that, mm -hmm. almost uh, 2015, 16, 17, 18, 19, four years later, right. the equipment had not been released from the port. Mm -hmm. And we were just seeing the equipment released from the port the other day. And the reasons cited for the failure to release the, the equipment, other than the legal process mm -hmm. that was involved in the whole scandal uh, being cleared mm -hmm. um, by the courts, there was the reason that they could not even afford to dispatch this uh, particular mobile clinics right. to the various counties. Mm -hmm. You see, the problem with corruption is that uh, when we fail to look at it from the point of view of how does it hamper service delivery and focus mostly on how much money is lost? Because at the end of the day, what will happen is that, uh, for instance, this particular equipment, mm -hmm. money that could have gone to improving other um, aspects of healthcare within the country yeah. has now been squandered. Mm -hmm. And thank God that now we are seeing people who come out and call out, you know, call out falsehood for what it is. Yes. Call out... Uh, Persons trying to um, squander money that is money that has been issued, rather money that is taxpayers' money. Mm -hmm. Persons trying to squander out that particular money, yes. calling them out for, you know, for that particular corruption. Mm. And how I wish that various suppliers would come out and say that mm. you know what, this is what has been happening. That we are paid this particular amount, but the amount that is stated before Parliament or the amount that is written within the books is totally different. Right. Because if we have um, individuals coming out and, and, and saying, you know, suppliers coming out and mm -hmm. saying this is what has been happening, then the war against corruption can 
we can say that there is a step towards you know, fighting the war against corruption. Right. The problem is that, uh, for instance, now this is a Dutch company. Mm -hmm. If this was a Kenyan company, oh, they would go I, um, along to I, go along to get along. Exactly. They yeah. would they would say yes. That is the amount of money that we were paid. Yeah. But how much? I mean, what is the cost of corruption in this country? You know? Because now what is happening is that equipment mm -hmm. that could at the moment, for example, the equipment that could at the moment be used mm -hmm. cannot be used because the case has to be cleared. Yes. The scandal behind it has to be investigated mm -hmm. before the equipment is dispatched to the various hospitals. Yes. Yeah. Now, you know, the cost goes beyond, as you're saying, goes beyond the figures, this 900 million less that is being talked about. It goes down to the common wananchi and what they needed and are not getting because somebody thought they would take their sweet time with, for example, with the mobile clinics to, to, to get the most out of the deal. And obviously, in this case, equipment. What do you feel about this one, Mr. Bichachi? You know... I really wonder the phone calls that I must have gone to Philip's uh, management trying right. to beg them to <laughs> defer their costs and to change what it was. Yeah. And this is actually a very good story to mm -hmm. highlight what happens wrong in mm -hmm. the procurement process in this country. Number one, you will find that it was probably totally legal yeah. to vary the cost from 15,000 shillings mm -hmm. to 1.2 million. Mm -hmm. And that's the form of corruption that we need to fight most. It's called wastage. Yes. Uh, uh, you know, and it happens in, in everything. You'll find that there are airline tickets in this country that mm -hmm. cost upwards of a million shillings mm -hmm. because there's a procurement officer somewhere who has a deal with a travel agency and you'll find mm -hmm. that legally he's done the right thing but we've, we, the country has incurred wastage and that's the bigger corruption in this country. The bigger yes. corruption in this country is that a lot of the procurement that is done mm -hmm. is done in excess of what is normal. You remember quite popular and spectacularly mm -hmm. uh, the wheelbarrows of Bungoma County yes. that were in the millions of shillings and no one was arrested for it because they must have arranged mm -hmm. that the lowest bidder for that particular wheelbarrow was bidding at 1.5 million shillings per wheelbarrow and those are the things that we need to change, yeah. that we need to address and realize that it is not just, and I've said on this show many times, it is not enough to be legal. You must also be right and you must have a good conscience mm -hmm. about what you're doing. And this country lacks good conscience. Mm -hmm. The very fact that today with the headline is not CS resigns in shame, yes. that should tell you what is wrong with this Absolutely. country. It's, it's, you know, people will say, let the president fire mm -hmm. before you get fired. Honestly, when you're sitting atop of an organization mm -hmm. where someone is going to come and say that there is an accounting variance of a billion shillings yeah. and you will comfortably sit back left mm -hmm. in your SUV, which, by the way, is not supposed to be an SUV already. Mm -hmm. You're already being corrupt in your big car, right? <laughs> and you're sitting comfortably back left, being driven mm -hmm. in the streets of Nairobi, mm -hmm. looking, da looking at the people of whom you've stolen a billion shillings mm -hmm. from. You may not mm -hmm. have stolen it directly. Mm -hmm. But you were in charge when that when that uh, money was was being taken, mm. and you have no guilt of conscience at all. That is what is wrong with this country. Absolutely. And you're speaking of that, those wheelbarrows that are worth millions. We are having here microwave ovens that are worth... <laughs> for, let me give you an excerpt from that article. We are told, for instance, in Kakamega Level 5 Hospital, a microwave oven was leased at 1.2 million shillings. Yeah. And then three spotlights leased yes. at 4.2 million yes. shillings, which means each spotlight was leased at 1.4 million shillings. Ridiculous, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Two things. Least, actually, yeah. <laughs> you know, I want to quite understand. Mm. One, who owned the escrow account right. to which the original 4.5 billion was paid, mm -hmm. then father paid Phillips. Yeah. There must have been an intermediary. Yes. Either that mm -hmm. or... Money just got lost at Mafia House, sorry, mm -hmm. Afia House. Mm -hmm. Money just got lost at Afia House right. before it even got there. Yeah. So it was stolen. Then to clean books, mm -hmm. they have decided to put it onto the initial project, mm -hmm. thinking that it will not be flagged down. Yeah. If the latter is the case, then Sicily is squarely to blame. Mm -hmm. However, if the former is the case, then mm -hmm. Sicily had not taken her, uh, the, had not sat at the helm of yeah. the Ministry yeah. of Health. Yes. We need to go back to whether it was Mailu 
or Masharia yeah. and ask tough questions mm -hmm. and ask who was involved in this. Mm -hmm. I am praying that it will not take 16 hours mm -hmm. before heads are rolled. But even though I know, I am hoping against <laughs> yes. hope. Mm -hmm. You need to understand when we say wastage of 900 million, mm. that to do one kilometer of low seal tarmac road, one kilometer is 13 million shillings. Yeah. You have essentially robbed people mm -hmm. of 70 kilometers of low seal tarmac mm. that would serve them absolutely well for eight years. Right. 70 kilometers in those people I saw in the backyard of uh, Kipchumba Murkomen, mm -hmm. El Geo Marakwet, mm -hmm. where there are no roads, and even yeah. Muranga. Mm -hmm. Farmers who need to access markets who are only praying for low seal tarmac mm -hmm. so that it can change their lives for eight years. If you go to Laikipia, tomatoes are rotting in the farms because the roads mm -hmm. are not there yet. 900 million is stolen and we want to clap and mm -hmm. move on. Yeah. We spoke about the, the containers that were stuck, that were part of this um, madness. Yes. And I read painfully mm -hmm. that money had been used from the sports fund. Absolutely. Which we were told mm -hmm. that the, we could not have young people chairing mm -hmm. it because the old were trusted with the money. <laughs> the old have allowed 1.2 billion to be, yeah. to be utilized for a transaction that's already illegal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is tragic. It is. And when we have said that there needs to be administrative action, we mean it. We want it so badly in the judiciary, but we also want to see that level of accountability mm. taken to other, you know, mm, government geez, yes. agencies and departments mm. so that there is seen to be a consistent desire to fight graft. If at the end of the day we are not able to tell who is who, then it's right. Listen, the spotlight, the theater spotlight, one is mm. 1,700 shillings. Yes. 1,900. <laughs> so three of them are 5,700. Yeah. But we have leased them mm -hmm. for 1.2 million shillings. Imagine or is it 4.2? Yeah. For something whose life mm -hmm. on the shelf is ordinarily 10 years mm -hmm. and it will work effectively. Yeah. How many would we have bought for how many hospitals? Imagine that. If Not three, three. Yes. we are paying 4.2 million. Mm. 4.2 million would buy them in their thousands. Mm. And each hospital would have them for the next 10 years. Yes. Here we are. Yeah. Yet we want to clap and say, the you know, the leasing mm. that started with the motor vehicles, which was, for motor vehicles, it makes, makes a sense. bit of sense. Yeah. For some of this equipment, <laughs> it's a joke. Yeah. Never mind. Mm -hmm. Most of them have not been used. And, yeah. and, and let's, let's, let's be clear. Mm -hmm. The biggest tragedy here is that we don't own any of these things. That, yeah. 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 that we paid millions <laughs> for things. And the second thing is this. Mm -hmm. And Kenyans need to understand that leasing is done for expensive equipment exactly. whose mm -hmm. rate of replacement is too high to yeah. justify buying them. I'll exactly. give you an example. Today, even this big hospitals, Nairobi Hospital, whatever, what they do is their CT scan is leased. Mm -hmm. And Philips knows that it's going to be leased. Because where Philips makes its money is, is in the, uh, the consumables mm -hmm. that are used within the, the system. So yes. they know if this machine is going to last there four years, right. before we have to change it, we'll have mm -hmm. made our money it's back in the consumables. Mm -hmm. So it does not make sense to lease a trolley. <laughs> Let's be clear to Kenyans. It's it does joke. not make sense. Yeah. So already, and that's why I talked about the wastage, mm. that there is inherent wastage in how government procures. Right. And I can promise you yes. that if you look at government procurement by and large, mm -hmm. you will find a lot of legal wastage. And that's what we need to fight. Absolutely. Over to you, yeah. Let's hear what you yes. have to say. Let's, let's see what it's, happens it's a, after It's this. Friday. Yes. We'll, we have missed those Fridays. In, yes. fact, in fact, they can call me and Osanyi for a citizen arrest. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, uh, okay. And, uh, and exp uh, you know, <clears throat> when somebody is making that much money off the public, you know, right. it would be preposterous for any one of us to expect that they would resign. I for know. me, the bug <laughs> stops, stops with yeah. the president. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you cannot be telling us one day that there is a revenue collection uh, shortfall, mm -hmm. that uh, the country cannot meet its development uh, requirements. Because, Yet, yeah. on the other hand, somebody just goes away, you know, steals. Mm -hmm. This is outright theft. You yeah, cannot it call is. it any other thing. It sure. is theft. Absolutely. Somebody just uh, steals 900 million mm -hmm. and uh, goes caught. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's just a headline. We're not seeing any 
movement i mean on the ground as it were now even even if you were to calculate ecd classes which yeah. are over quoted at 1 million shillings for mm -hmm. one yeah. those are 900 Hundred. classes yeah. imagine for that for ecd yes. for kids who i saw recently in a clip from uh, from west pokot was mm -hmm. it seated under trees not under a tree mm -hmm. in a classroom with no roof mm -hmm. it's raining mm -hmm. And there's water. Literally, Flooding, those kids, yes. those kids mm -hmm. are going to come down with bilharzia and mm -hmm. many of those other diseases. Yeah. Right. Abs 900 yes. million rests in pockets. Uh, absolutely. Oh. Now, uh, I mean, corruption is something that is some we are so used to on the headlines. I mean, unfortunately, it's the new normal one day. in Kenya. Yeah. One, yeah, one day. day, this but, should but, end. But, but, uh, Bichachi, but we have to move on okay. to the next uh, <laughs> <laughs> to the next um, uh, topic, and this is the top headline on the on the nation. We're told Uhuru Ru and Ruto fight for control of parliament. Senators will next week vote to adopt or reject Treasury push to raise Kenya's debt ceiling to nine trillion. And the DP's allies have vowed to shoot down the proposal, which is dear to the president. Who has the numbers? And page four gives us more details about this one. Maga, what's your take on this one? Uh, the apparent fight. Yes, mm. there, there is a fight, of course. Yeah. Uh, we know quite well that there is a URP wing and there is a TNA wing within Jubilee. Yes. And uh, they have been at it for quite some time now. Mm. Uh, the other day, the president actually um, relied on ODM legislators to pass this particular bill mm -hmm. through the National Assembly. Mm -hmm. He totally ignored his own people, who, uh, whom, of course, had called for a GP, which he didn't want to have. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he basically just ignored them and uh, talked to Raila and had it passed. Mm -hmm. I expect it to be passed in the Senate, of course. Yeah. Uh, he has the numbers considering uh, that ODM is on his side. Mm. But uh, this is bound to get ugly. Of course, uh, it is all about the fight yeah. for Jubilee. Mm -hmm. Like I've said before, uh, Ruto has two options, either to bolt out or to stay put mm -hmm. uh, within Jubilee. For me, my advice to him would be to stay put. Mm -hmm. This is his house. Uh, running away from it isn't the solution. For the long term, stay put, fight for your place. It is the vehicle that can take you to, uh, to 2022 and beyond. <laughs> well, uh, Ms. Amboga. Um, I honestly feel that in any nation that is trying to grow, yeah. there needs to be an active opposition. Mm -hmm. And much as um, the value of having a government of national unity, mm -hmm. or rather the value of having a coalition government, is that there, there will be peace in a, I mean, peace prevailing in a country that would otherwise be at war. Mm -hmm. my, my, my worry becomes when, when the agenda to achieve peace is over-focused yeah. on mm -hmm. and supersedes the common one inches agenda, which yeah. is that when we elected you, mm -hmm. as per our laws, the reality is that if you do not make it to parliament, or mm -hmm. rather if you do not make it to become the president, mm -hmm. then that the law prescribes that you should you know, become an opposition. Right. Uh, my, my question becomes that if governments are coming together for the purpose of peace in the name of the handshake, yeah. Where does that leave the common Manainchi's interests? Right. And, you know, ideally, an, an opposition's work is to guard the interests of the citizen. Yes, Forget yes, about the control of the house. Mm. We are talking about raising Kenya's debt ceiling to 9 trillion mm. shillings. Mm -hmm. we, do not, we cannot afford to even pay back the kind of debts that we, we owe as it stands right now. Mm. We are getting to the point where if we do not watch out, mm -hmm. we shall auction parts of this country or various critical, you know, um, uh, services within this country, various critical Assets. ports, airports, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. we, we might find ourselves uh, in, in a position like one of these African countries that had to give away their airport, their national airport, yeah. had to give away uh, their police service to, mm -hmm. to, to one of the countries that they owed Zambia. money. But we have a parliament that is only concerned with impressing their political party leaders, mm. you know, at the expense of the common one inches interest. Very and, good and, and and at this mm. particular point, mm -hmm. you know, for me, my, my call and rallying call would be to Kenyans mm. to ask themselves and even ask their leaders that as we are voting for you while you're in parliament, is our agenda at the top of your mandate? Is it even on the top of the table, on top, <laughs> on top, of, the, on the top of the list? Or is it that you, 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 your focus and, 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 you know, focus is to basically you know, pro promote and, and propagate what your political party leaders um, say. And that also brings me to question, yeah. to ask also, yes. are our political parties 
idea based you know ideologically based They're because not, in, yeah. in particular yes. in certain democracies for right, example yeah. in the united states uh, and even other democracies mm -hmm. political parties run according to a particular agenda or a particular ideology that has been you know um, overriding that particular i mean a, a particular agenda that that po uh, political party has been pushing for a number of years mm -hmm. and some political parties would run on the agenda that you know the government should try as much as possible to spend as little as it can as it can mm -hmm. and to borrow as little as it can mm -hmm. but now our political parties are you know i mean take a look at, at us, the uh, helm uh, of our the political slogans the tbms exactly. and the tlls most when you look at the foreign countries the slogan the actually the embodies you embodies know, the what, values yes, of the people yes, and but what then the people when you hear what you're yelling every <laughs> it, it's nothing they're just exactly. onomatopoeic things that mean nothing yes, literally mark yes. what's your take well, what did you, you say the the, <laughs> the, the odm slogan was what is that you see well but that's what takes the day in terms of what you associate you see, the party with, when, yes. When when you ask people mm -hmm. what was the manifesto, mm -hmm. they'll tell you wembe ni ule ule, kumira kumira. That was that, that's what that's right. what a lot of people right. focused on. Mm -hmm. Now you see, we need to understand and one. Please thing. keep it short because you're running out of the time. biggest yeah. problem yeah. that we have in this country and why we are in this mess yes. is because we do not have a parliament. Mm. An organ that does not represent the people hold. cannot hold its name as parliament. Mm. It, you, you've lost it. That's number one. Mm. And how do you know they failed? Mm. Look at the budget passing process yes. and the conversations we are having now. It's as if we passed these budgets in our sleep. And then we woke up and we realized, wait a minute, mm. we dreamed up all, all these numbers. Yeah. But that's the price of corruption. Mm -hmm. When most of your leaders are focused on stealing, they will never ever focus on saving money. Because the more items there are on a budget, the more things there are to steal. And therefore, this war that is for the sides, it's not really for sides. It's not really for Kenyans. Yeah. Because where have they been all along? Mm -hmm. when, when government was borrowing, if they really had a problem, where have they been? Mm -hmm. And the question really portends this way. That should we be fighting corruption mm -hmm. more than we should be borrowing? Absolutely. Because clearly, if you just look at your headlines, you realize that if we just stopped corruption, we would probably lend some money to Uganda. <laughs> yes. That's what we should be yeah. talking about. We have a because the problem is we've put thieves in charge of sheep. Yeah. And the sheep really, really like dancing for the thieves. You wait on Sunday, you see what the sheep will do. Uh, Mr. Osiani. Borrowing has never been the problem. Yes, I agree. The problem has always been how we end up using mm -hmm. what we borrow. Mm -hmm. yes. In our country, we have learned to borrow, then loot it all. Mm. You borrow, but before it arrives here, it's disappeared on the high seas. Yeah. Our debt to GDP ratio is now worrying. Mm -hmm. And uh, professional economists uh, have said, up to and including some of the Bretton Woods institutions, yeah. which sometimes I don't take too seriously because they can play with those figures at will. Mm. But even them, they have decided to warn us yes. that our debt to GDP ratio is worrying. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. if we do not do something about it now, we are cooked. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It wouldn't have been worrying if the monies we had asked for mm -hmm. had been invested in our economy because then we would have seen yes. that money sparring economic growth. Absolutely. What it did mm -hmm. is that it hit our economy. Mm -hmm. It did not even hit our economy. It arrived into our country mm -hmm. and was distributed among uh, you know, cartels and crooks like I'm seeing here. Yeah. The day we learn that all countries, including U.S., mm -hmm. have debt... Tremendous debt. Mm -hmm. The difference is how they use the that debt, money, yes. how they ensure that the money borrowed mm. has impacted positively yes. on the economy. Absolutely. Many countries actually develop off of debt, and some of the countries we are borrowing from even have their own. Men. Yes, even yeah. businessmen. That uh, it's not uh, debt is not a problem. It's how we are using it, and that is pretty clear if you know the economics of it all. And we're going to take a short break on that note. When we come back, we'll have more for you.